assalamu alaikum guys today we are going to start with the second part of the chapter repression and its measurements and it's also related with the hydrostatic pressures so last time we have derived the relationship between the pressure and the pressure heads in the form of p is equal to rho g h in this derivation p is equal to rho g h p is the pressure and h is the pressure head so in this way you can relate the pressure and the pressure heads with each other and in any circumstances we can determine the either values now today we are going to start of the the utilization and Im implementation of this relationship between the pressure and pressure heads to uh, measure the pressures by using the different devices so today we are going to start with the very simplest device that is called piezometer and its working principle we will discuss today the relationship between the pressure and head is utilized for pressure measurement in the manometer or the liquid gauges the relationship between pressure and heads is utilized for pressure measurement in the manometer or the liquid gauge the simplest form is the pressure tube or piezometer consisting of a single vertical tube open at the top inserted into a pipe or vessel containing liquid under pressure which rises in the tube to a height depending on the pressure if the top of the tube is open to the atmosphere the pressure measured is gauge pressure here if you see in the figure on the right hand side of this slide then you can see that this is the tube about which we are talking about this tube is going to be inserted vertically into a vessel it may be a circular or it may be any other shape but generally we are going to for the description purpose we are going to be use the circular one or spherical one so in this case if certain liquid is going to be inserted into this bottom vessel under pressure and one tube is going to be inserted with a smaller diameter in, into this vessel then the liquid can rise within this tube depending upon the pressure of the liquid the difference of the pressure of the liquid and the atmospheric pressure in this case it is an atmospheric pressure where the open end of the liquid is directly in uh, have in contact with the air so then or the atmosphere so then we can say no other liquid has been filled into this tube at the top at the top surface the top surface is have a direct contact with the atmosphere then we can say that atmospheric pressure has been inserted at the top of this tube on the liquid and the liquid can rise against this atmospheric pressure due to its own pressure so in this way uh, if the atmospheric pressure is taken as in standard or as in datum reference then we can say it is a gauge pressure and this we have discussed in the part 1 of our uh, chapter in which we have discussed different types of the pressures that how the uh, definition of the pressures are going to be changed depending upon the datum or the reference point about which you are measuring the pressure so if you are insert in interested to determine the pressure at a point within this vessel just at the connect connecting point of the tube and the vessel in which liquid has been inserted then at point a this point a is going to give you a pressure head or height equal to h1 from the reference point that is the the surface of the liquid so from the surface of the liquid if the height of this point a or you can say the pressure head of this point a is h1 then how the pressure can be measured by the relationship that we have derived earlier that pressure at a will be equal to pressure due to column of liquid of height h1 having a certain density rho so pressure due to column of liquid of height h1 will be equal to rho g h1 that we have derived earlier so it will be going to give you a pressure pa is that will be equal to rho g h1 for the point a now similarly if another point or any another section within this vessel is point b and you are interested to measure the pressure at this point b then you must know about the pressure head or you can say the height of this uh, column of the liquid till point b from the surface of the liquid top surface of the liquid so this depth or this pressure head will be equal to h2 for the point b so for the 
to determine the pressure at B, you need to be have a very simplest formula. Sim just you are replacing the height of the column or pressure head with the corresponding point at which the pressure being measured. So it will be rho g h2. So P B will be equal to rho g h2. Now what kind of the problems uh, we may face for uh, this piezometer? It can only be used for the liquids. If we are interested to determine the pressure for the air then uh, or the gases, then it will be very difficult. So it only be used for the liquids. Pressure must above the atmospheric. Why? Because if it is not, then it will go down. So pressure of the liquid, first of all, this piezometer can be used only for the liquids. And the second condition is, or limitation is for this piezometer, that whatever the liquid you are using, this pressure of that liquid should be or must be above the atmospheric so that it may rise within the tube otherwise if it will be lower than the atmospheric pressure it the the height of the column will be in negative it will go down from the, in within that vessel so that is not going to give you an uh, logical um, you can say measurements for that so you have to shift towards the other kind of the devices that we will discuss later later in the these slide, slides and this in this part b we will discuss later on third point is liquids height must be convenient not be too small or too large okay so on the other side also if you are required having an pressure more than the atmospheric pressure then still it should not be much more than the difference should not be much more greater why because it should not be too large if it is the difference between the atmospheric pressure and the pressure of the liquid will be large then it will going to give you the height of the column may be much more larger than the tube that you have designed for the piezometer it may go out from this designed length of the tube so we must be whatever the height or you can say the length of this tube we have devised uh, and uh, we have designed so keeping this limit of this height the head should be maintained so we have a lot of limitations uh, for uh, by using this kind of a piezometer so what we can do we can also study the other more complex type of the piezometer or more uh, specified type in which we can just overcome these these limitations so we will see next is the manometer okay this these manometers are also the, the I mean, a device that is going to be used to measure the pressure is called a manometer and for the manometer um, we are going to be again uh, focus on the limitations that uh, we must face for the piezometer so in the manometer we can just um, go towards more advancement so we have u-tube manometer with us first of all we will discuss this type first type of the manometer the u-tube gauge can be used to measure the pressure of either liquid or gases so first limitation we have overcome okay so the first for the piezometer it was that only liquids can be used to measure the pressure but here for the manometer we can use the liquid and gases both the bottom of the u-tube is filled with the manometric liquid q which is of greater density rho manometer me m a n in substrate is going to be represent the density of the fluid that is going to be used within the manometer and one density of the fluid will be there for that particular fluid for which you are interested to determine or it is required to determine the pressure okay so one liquid is going to be used by the manometer within that and one liquid is going to be used for which you want to determine the pressure and is immixable with the fluid p liquid or gas of density rho whose pressure is to be measured so whatever the liquid you are using for which you are needed or you are required to measure the pressure for that again a certain density be there it may be liquid or gas and it should be immixable with the fluids that is used you are using as a fluid of the manometer okay so manometric fluid should not be mixed with the should not be uh, going to give you a, a mixable properties with the liquid or the gas that you are using to measure the pressure okay so it should be immixable so this is maybe you can say the only uh, limitation for the manometer that the fluid you are using to measure the pressure it should not be uh, mixed with the uh, fluid you using by used by the manometer now if we want to determine the pressure at different points 
okay then how we can do that our formula is with us okay nothing we need to do just we are going to be adding up the heads pressure heads due to the different type of the two different type of the fluids used by the manometer so first of all we need to be uh, understand the working principle or mean working how it works and how uh, the shape of the manometer u tube manometer has been maintained so for that you can see the vessel in which the fluid or uh, the liquid has been uh, put down uh, for which you are required to measure the pressure okay so this yellow uh, sorry blue uh, colored liquid is going to show you the liquid type of the liquid for which you are interested to determine the or to measure the pressure so here you are going to be uh, filled uh, fill the liquid or the gas okay required one and once you are going to be see this hatched part this black hatching at 45 degree you can see this hatching okay this hatching is going to show you the filling of the fluids that is by the manometer okay so it may be any type of the fluid we will discuss later on that which kind of the fluid is going to be used by the manometer that is the standard fluid having a standard density so this liquid q mass density rho manometric okay manometric fluid with the density certain density is going to be filled here so we can uh, uh, mark or label the different points within the manometer at which the pressure can be measured let's suppose this point a for the fluid that is uh, filled within the manometer that at point a you need to measure okay the pressure that is just aligned with the tube that is inserting within that vessel in which fluid has been filled then this tube you can see this tube is going to give you a bend 90 degree bend you can see over here then this tube is go on bending at 180 degree centigrade and then going up with the level that may be more than this tube uh, a level of this horizontal level of this tube that is coming out of this vessel this level should be more up okay so here the fluid has been put down if the pressure of the fluid may be at initial level may be anyone for this manometric fluid it may be up it may be down from the point b but let's suppose if the pressure of the fluid is more than the manometric fluid then it this column h1 this height of the column will go down it will be more okay it is going to put more pressure on the manometric fluid and this height of the column h2 will be will be more on the other side but let's suppose if the pressure of the fluid for which you are you are uh, measuring this pressure of the fluid is lesser than the manometric pressure of the manometric fluid then this height of the column will be go up the manometric fluid is going to push the liquid into this tube on the upper side the uh, height of the column within this tube will going to be rise h1 will be smaller and h2 will be larger so in this way uh, you can say uh, that depending upon the pressure of the fluid more than or less than the manometric fluid these heights are going to be fluctuate you will see or you will observe the fluctuation of these heights of the columns for the fluid and the manometric fluids both are going to be fluctuating and in this way this uh, mechanism to determine or measure the pressure will also be uh, changed let's suppose if you are you want to determine the pressure at point b here if the one cross section has been uh, cut or you can say a one line has been cut that is going to be passed through the bottom level of the fluid for which you uh, you are you need to measure the pressure and just at the start of the manometric fluid just at the intersection point if you are going to cut a section so on the other side of the this u tube um, this tube having a u shaped 180 degree bend so here anywhere it may cut the tube okay but you have b and you have c okay on both sides you may have these two points now if uh, we uh, want to measure the pressure at point b so what we have above the point b we have above the point b this pressure head first of all the height of the pressure due to height of this column vertical column that is due to this pressure head caused by this height of the column within that particular tube at one nine at 90 degree bend that is so starting from here till here that pressure head is going to be caused pressure on the manometric fluid so at point b first of all the pressure is going to be inserted or the fluctuation within the head is going to be inserted due to this fluid pressure that will be equal to uh, 
uh, rho g and h1 okay and if we you will be come at that level this particular level is going to be coincide with this point a okay so this uh, height with of this fluid within the column is further is going to be cause an additional pressure that is above the point a this pressure of the fluid and plus the pressure due to the uh, the, the liquid raised or present within this tube so the pressure at the point a plus if we we are going to be inside this with this point then plus the pressure due to this height or this rise of the fluid within that particular column okay or this particular tube so you need to be add both of these pressures so pressure pa at a it is not atmospheric pressure within the vessel so if it will be atmospheric then you need to be consider consider it as a datum point and you can consider it at as zero okay but if it is not let's suppose if it is not equal to atmospheric pressure then what you need to be consider you need to be consider the pressure of the particular point due to this height of the column or this liquid so this will be pressure at point a plus pressure due to depth h1 of the fluid p due to this pressure head so it will be pa plus rho g h1 for the right hand limb this is for the left hand limb okay so here now right hand limb if you will come this uh, c point above the c point till d c to d if you want to determine the pressure for at point c it will be pressure pd at point d plus the pressure due to depth h2 or height h2 of the liquid q mean manometric fluid so here if you will see the pressure at point d obviously it will be an atmospheric pressure and if you are considering it as a datum point it will be zero gauge pressure we have discussed this point earlier so here you can consider the datum point and you can later on consider this pressure at point d as equal to zero but this pressure due to the manometric fluid and the this pressure head of the manometric fluid should be included it will be h2 so it will be uh pc should will be equal to zero mean atmospheric pressure the pressure of at point d and rho manometric fluid for the manometric fluid and g into h2 okay so your two variables be there your density is also going to be changed for the manometer because the manometer is going to be used going to be um uh, going to be have its own uh, fluid having its own density different density so h2 will be the height of the column of the manometric fluid or pressure head of the manometric fluid so at point c you are also can you can also you can also determine the pressure since pb is equal to pc these are at the same levels at the same height so to balance the pressure of this whole device the pressure at b should be equal to pressure at c okay so why we are not considering the pressure due to this fluid we have considered this the, this all fluid pressure at a we have considered and we have considered the pressure due to this we are not considering this horizontal part also okay this vertical column is going to be this vertical all of these vertical fluid is going to be uh, put in pressure on point a and further this is going to be aligned with the pressure that is caused by this 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 horizontal is also eliminated because the horizontal flowing fluid at rest are not going to be put any pressure that we have discussed earlier they are these are not going to be produced any kind of pressure only in the tube the vertical one is going to put a pressure because due to the uh, density and due to the vertical force uh, its own weight of the fluid downward these are going to be put a pressure okay uh, but the horizontal one is not going to put a pressure and similarly if you talk about this uh, bend from b to c downward this bend is also not going to give you a final uh, effect of the pressure on uh, the pressure on the other points why because this is going to give you an equal and opposite pressure okay if you're going to be cut this bend into two halves so this quarter bend is going to put a pressure in this direction and this quarter bend is going to put a pressure in this in in this direction so these all like this this is going to put a pressure in this direction and this one is going to put a pressure in this so it will be equal and opposite if you are going to be make this into halves okay so this quarter is going to put a pressure that will be equal and opposite to the pressure caused by the other half of the bend this quarter part so these are going to be cancelled out so lower than b and c the 
pressure of the liquid manometric fluid or the other fluid uh, uh, that is going to be put in this bend is going to be cancelled out so only we are going to be left from c to d this this height of the column of the fluid is going to put a pressure on this manometer and this part is going to be put a pressure on the manometer so otherwise we are not going to be uh, consider this part and also this horizontal part we are not going to be considering so your pb to uh, the, for the balance conditions and also uh, for this manometer the pressure at b should be equal to pressure at c so you are going to be input the values and finally the pressure at point a that is our required pressure for the fluid will be equal to rho manometric gh2 minus rho gh1 so you are familiar you, are, you will be known with the density of the fluid that you for which you are measuring the pressure and uh, the manometric fluid is obviously will be known to you and these heights are going to be measured by the manometer itself and finally by inputting the values you can measure the values obviously the manometer will give you directly the answers but if not then these heights can be measured uh, by yourself and you can in use this formula uh, this the theoretical calculations you can use to determine the pressure at point a so this pressure at point a finally will give you the required pressure of this liquid within this vessel okay so in this way this will be your uh, unknown and finally it will be known to you what if the fluid is a gas okay we have we have mostly talk about the liquid but if we have uh, also discussed this thing our manometer can be used for both liquid and gases so if it will be a gas then what we can we are going to do so your rho manometric mean the density of the manometric fluid should be much more more greater than the density of the gas and secondly rho gh1 can be neglected and pa will be rho manometric gh2 so it will be obvious okay because the density of the gas is very very small okay and you are using the fluid as a manometric fluid so within the keeping the liquid domains already the manometric fluid have the greater density usually the mercury is going to be used for this purpose for the manometric fluid purpose because it has a greater and larger densities and atmospheric pressure is equal to zero so for that we are going to be using the manometric fluid most of the times for the uh, manometer Uh, mercury we are going to be using as a manometric fluid but if uh, not any other fluid we are going to be using still it should have the density much more greater than the other liquids and keeping the liquid domain and if we are uh, changing the domain and we are uh, coming inside the uh, gas domain then for the gases uh, categories again those are having a much more smaller densities as compared to liquids so uh, if this is the particular case and this is an uh, obvious Uh, fact so keeping this fact in our mind this rho g h1 can be neglected so it's very small and we can neglect that part and finally if the pressure of the gases needed to be determined it directly be equal to rho manometric g h2 this first term within this equation the second term we can neglect due so to very here small we can see in this slides the different type of the youtube manometers so uh, the shape of the manometer may be like this in which you are going to show you going to uh, see the fluid that is above the uh, tube of the manometer that is having a 180 degree bend so this is going to give you a negative pressure manometer so in which the pressure of the fluid is less mean uh, less than the pressure of the fluid so here you can see the another type in which this type of the fluid is there in which the pressure is going to be first of all increased in one tube and then further the youtube manometer be there so this darker color shade is going to be used to uh, going to be going to represent the manometric fluid okay and this is the density or the specific gravity of the manometry fluid sm and z and y are the pressure heads at different points for the b point it will be from point a till b the z pressure head and from b to the level that is lower in the manometry tube on the other side that is due to the negative pressure of the fluid that is going to be this so in the negative pressure in the right hand limb the pressure of the manometry fluid will be more as compared to the Uh, 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 right hand sorry in the left uh, hand limb of the manometer the pressure of the fluid is more as compared to right hand limb so in this way you can you can see the negative pressure this is due to the negative pressure in which the pressure manometric fluid is pushing up the pressure of the fluid in the upward direction so this is due to the negative pressure of the fluid that is keeping in this vessel for the manometer and on the other side if this is the case this is also a negative Uh, to determine the negative pressure because here you can see again the left hand side limb having a more pressure as compared to right hand limb so here the manometer uh, manometric fluid is pushing the fluid uh, 
uh, in the manometer upward in upward direction so in this way again it is going to give you a negative pressure so here if you are going to be having a more you can say a, some more advancement in the manometer you can add a air relief valve to measure the absolute pressure so here you can control the pressure of the air that is put as to determine the pressure so here you can just control its pressure and depending upon this the rise and the fall within the manometric fluid is may happen and again you can determine the pressure uh, by using the same formula now another type of the manometer is u tube differential manometer the u tube manometer can be connected at both ends to measure the pressure difference between these two points so if the same fluid is going to be uh, put in a vessel and that is connected with a u tube uh, tube with the 180 degree bend having a manometric fluid and on the other side the same fluid has been uh, put or has been kept in the vessel so if the level of these two vessels are kept a little bit um, higher and lower and the difference between the levels are going to be kept and keeping the density same this may be a row one uh, that is represented over here this row one is the density of the fluid for which we need to measure the pressure and here the manometric fluid has been put having a density row two and the different pressure heads the fluid that is kept in a vessel a for that particular fluid this point a is going to give you a pressure head at the top of the manometric fluid that is a and on the other limb at the same cross section xx if we, uh, if we go towards the right limb so in the right limb you can see this pressure head from the cross section till the top of the manometric fluid it will be h1 and for the fluid particularly it will be from the cross section this pressure head will be b okay so if it is required from the left hand side for the left hand limb you can see pxx mean the pressure at the cross section xx here at the bottom it will be the PA plus the pressure due to this vertical column due to the liquid of this uh, that, that is kept or um, risen within this tube equal to that particular pressure head that will A. So its density is rho 1. So rho 1 G A is the pressure head and this is going to give you the pressure at this particular cross section due to this vertical column and plus this pressure at point A. Now if we come towards the right hand side limb, so here you have again the same cross section and at the same cross section if you want to determine the pressure, so it will be due to the pressure at point B plus the pressure due to this vertical height of the column and then the pressure due to the vertical height of this manometric fluid due to this manometric fluid. So if you want to uh, determine the pressure head of from point B till the top of the manometric fluid this fluid for due to this fluid what is the pressure has been generated that can be determined by rho 1 g the pressure head will be b minus h b is the total pressure head from point b to cross section and h is the pressure head from the top of the manometric fluid till the cross section so this difference will be b minus h will be equal to this pressure head so in this way you can see if we come vertically up so this distance vertical distance will be b minus h so this will be due to the pressure of this fluid in this, this vertical direction so uh, then the third uh, pressure that is going to affect at cross section x on right hand side it will be due to the manometric fluid so it will be rho 2 gh so if uh, we want to determine the difference between the pressure of pb minus pa so it will be like this so if a and b are at the same levels then this will be equal to this equation okay so all of uh, will give you the only the level will be different for this vertical height it will be then a minus h if those are at the same level so you may have the differential manometer with a and b at the same level and at the diff different levels so for both of the cases you may have the difference of the pressure will be equal to the pressure of the liquid for which you want to determine the pressure so and in this the type way, of YouTube you differential manometer for the huge differential other than the different vessels you can have the water that has been kept into a one uh, almost inclined a little bit inclined tube 
and this tube is further is going to be connected with a u shaped manometer that is u tube manometer here and this u tube manometer at 180 degree bend this tube is has been connected with a tube that is a little bit inclined having a point a and a point b okay so these are also at different levels these point a and point b it may be at the same level keeping this tube horizontal okay and having the same connection of the tubes like this so this level vertical level from point b till the cross section at which we are going to be uh, write the equation or why we are going to be determining the pressure that is cd cross section mean passing through c and d from this point top of the manometer uh, manometric fluid on one side and it is crossing on the other side okay so uh, from this cross section the point b having a head equal to b and point a has a head equal to a and the difference of the manometric fluid within the u tube it will be h okay so in this way for the right hand limb you can write the equation that will be pb the pressure at b okay plus the pressure due to this vertical column okay and this vertical column horizontal has been eliminated it will be b minus h this vertical height from here till point b okay so this will be b minus h so from here till here so due to the fluid present in the tube only considering the vertical one this one plus this one okay so we are we are not the center of the horizontal tube okay so this from b to this and from this to this we are neglecting the horizontal part because it is not going to be impart any pressure so its effect is not, has been cancelled out we are not considering it so on the other side from here to here uh, at uh, for the right hand limb so it will be uh, manometric fluid multiplied by h so it will be like this so pc should be equal to pd on the other side also pc um, uh, will be equal to pa okay and plus this so this vertical height so you are going to be considering so pc will be equal to pd if you are going to be considering over here so it will be equal to this equation so pressure difference you can determine at the end pa minus pb by using this equation so you can simplify this equation and you can get this answer so if all the values are with you then theoretically you can determine the pressure difference then you have inverted in youtube for that particular detail so the same differential manometer but but vertically you are going to be inputting it so in this way the manometric fluid has been uh, kept here okay in, in this part that is showing you a black one and again the bluish part has been going to going to be represent the fluid that has for which you need to measure the uh, pressure okay so similarly now you can drive by yourself at the cross section x x okay on the right hand side and on the left hand side and then the pressure difference can be determined by using the same equation next very simplest device that can be used to determine the uh, again the pressures this that is called barometer okay this barometer like a piezometer is very simplest form of uh, you can say a device that can be used to determine the pressures if a tube lower end is immersed in a liquid which is exposed to the atmospheric pressure and if air is ex exhausted from the tube the liquid will rise in it if air is completely exhausted the only pressure on the surface of the liquid in the tube would then be that of its own vapor pressure and the liquid would have reached its maximum height that is obvious it's very simple physics rule that and very simple you can say an experiment you can do by yourself also that if you are going to be immerse a certain you have a just an empty tube and you are going to be immersed it in a liquid kept in a vessel under the atmospheric pressure open pressure environmental pressure if only the atmospheric pressure be there and you are going to be immersing a tube within it okay so then what is going to be happened that is the, the water is going to be raised within this tube up, up to a certain level and if you are going to be creating a vacuum over there at the top then only the vapor pressure is the resisting force or you can say the pressure that may be exerting against the atmospheric pressure so the vapor pressure of the liquid is keep on or tends to push the water within the tube downward and this atmospheric pressure for the outside liquid tends to push the outside liquid downward and ultimately 
uh, going to be pushing the pressure in the upward direction so here i will show you how it comes okay this atmospheric pressure it will go down within the liquid like this and if it is come at the periphery or boundary of this open tube then it tends to push the liquid the same liquid inside the tube in the upward direction so you can say equal to this pressure atmospheric pressure the force is going to be inserted within the tube this for this liquid within the tube in upward direction and the vapor pressure is going to be resisting this atmospheric pressure downward so in this way this is the only resisting force within the barometer has been generated so we can measure the height of the liquid this y distance within the barometer starting from the upper level of the water the liquid outside and the level of the water the liquid inside of the tube so this is going to give you the mean to say a pressure head you can say or the height or the level of the yeah, barometer this is called so uh, the pressure at o within the tube and at a at the surface of the liquid outside the tube must be the same that is p not must be equal to p a so here if we are going to be write an equation for that so p atmospheric into a minus p vapor into a and minus gamma a y okay so it will be equal to zero so a mean to say that the area i mean mean to say the um, uh, cross sectional area so if the four the stresses are going to be or pressure is needed to be determined that pressure will be equal to the force mean p atmospheric okay and the how the forces are going to be determined by multiplying it with the cross sectional area so capital a is actually the cross sectional area of the tube okay and this um, pressure is can be converted into forces later on by multiplying it with the cross sectional area so if the cross sectional area is going to be multiplying with the pressure it will be the forces so it 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 will be like this so on the other side a into y will be the cross sectional area multiplied by the effective uh, spherical or you can say the peripheral uh, boundary at which the vapor pressure has been exerted so here you can say p atmospheric will be gamma y plus p vapor so finally if the vapor pressure on the surface of the liquid in the tube were negligible it's very small then you can neglect that and it will be equal to gamma y so what does it means that equal to the density of the liquid that is putting inside the tube multiplying by the pressure head that will be equal to p atmospheric so those are resisting each other if the level is going to be maintained at a certain point then it will be balanced if it is fluctuating so what does it means that p atmospheric is not a constant value it's variable and at one uh, point or location Possibly it will give you height. a different answer so here and we on can the other it will give in the next slide we can uh, so just p atmospheric elaborated and then uh, can be determined uh, uh, more convenient way uh, the uh, like of the fluid i told you that the atmospheric pressure is going to push the water inside and depending upon that the pressure the vapor pressure has been going to be go down so if the atmospheric pressure is more the liquid will give you more rise in the tube and if the atmospheric pressure is lesser than the vapor pressure then it will go down so here you can see an old school style of the barometer reading so down when there is less air pressure down onto it okay so if the air pressure is less then it will be go down and it will give you the more vapor pressure so here you can see a very smallest barometer very simplest barometer in which the air pressure has been uh, inserted on the liquid in which the tube has been inserted and the pressure is going to be push the liquid inside the tube in upward direction so here the vacuum has been created only the vapor pressure is the resulting force if the vapor pressure is negligible only the atmospheric pressure is responsible that is going to resist the density of the fluid against the density or the weight weight of the fluid is only the resisting uh, factor if the vapor pressure is negligible and only the vacuum has been generated so here the scaling be there this y distance that in the latest in the previous slide we have discussed this y distance can be measured by using the scale and this liquid will be the mercury if if the vapor pressure uh, you can consider negligible or the zero for that another solution is that you are going to use the liquid in the tube other than the liquid in which uh, this tube has been inserting if it is water let's suppose then on the other side you can use the mercury in the barometer this mercury is going to be considered having a zero vapor pressure no vapor pressure so if no vapor pressure has been generated only the vacuum be there then that uh, equation 
in the previous slide will holds true in which p atmospheric will be equal to gamma into y mean it only depends on going having a resisting force equal to the weight of this fluid in downward direction so the liquid employed for the barometer is usually mercury because its, its density is sufficient great uh, sufficiently great greater to in, in enable the reasonably short tube and its vapor pressure is negligible at ordinary temperature so correction of the capillary action and the vapor pressure should be applied next is the bowden gauge that can be used to measure the pressures pressure or vacuums the negative pressures are commonly measured by the bowden gauge in this gauge a curved tube or elliptical cross section will change its curvature with changes in the pressure within the tube the moving end of the tube rotates and hand on a dial through a linkage system a pressure in the vacuum gauge combined into one is known as compound gauge so here you can see uh, the schematic diagram of uh, the bowden gauge in which you can see this elliptical here the same vessel be there the fluid with the specific gravity gamma for which you want to determine the uh, pressure and on the upper side it, it is elliptical okay so here this is going to give you the liquid filled with the other type of the liquid like mercury and other and the pressure is going to be exerted so the level of this z is can be changed and then it can be measured on a mechanical gauge or, or the dial that is above this particular elliptical part so here you can see okay in bars you can measure the pressure okay so in inside of it you can see this mechanical part in which it is going to be connected on one side with the uh, tube okay in which the fluid fluid has been put it has been kept on the other side the mechanical part of it okay so in this way the bowden gauge is going to be work out so if the negative pressure and the simple pressure are both are combined in one bowden gauge to determine mean on negative side here you can see the negative pressure on this side and positive pressure on this side both can be measured meanwhile so it will be a compound gauge so the bowden gauge the pressure indicated by the gauge is assumed to be that at its center if the connecting piping is filled completely with the fluid of the same density as that in a and if pressure gauge is graduated to read in psi then your pressure at point a in the previous slide you can see the point a is just at the center of the vessel okay it will be equal to gauge reading plus gamma z divided by 144 so a vacuum gauge or the negative pressure portion of the compound gauge is traditionally graduated to read in inches or millimeter of the mercury for the vacuum so these are the just uh, conversion factors okay so in millimeter of mercury mean mercury vacuum at a will be the gauge reading in hg of the vacuum minus a gamma z 29.9 divided by 144 into 14.7 so here at this stage this conversion factors and how it comes it's it's not uh, of your scope okay so what you can do you can just memorize these equations so if it is required and your bowden gauge ultimately mechanically is going to be relate going to be use these uh, factors uh, automatically and mechanically finally you are going to be getting your answers in psi okay so you need not to do these calculations by yourself by using the bowden gauge here once again it is assumed that this fluid completely fills the connecting tubes the evaluation correction uh, elevation corrections terms like those containing z may be positive or negative depending on whether the gauge is above or below the point at which the pressure determination is desired so this elevation correction is very important and that you need to do so once you are be there to use the bowden gauge then you need to do the elevation correction also the expression given are for this situation depicted when measuring gas pressures the elevation correction terms are generally negligible the above equations when written in si system required no correction factors however care must be taken in dealing with the decimal points when adding terms so these are very simple and basic uh, you can say points to uh, take care of while using the bowden gauge so here you have a labeled diagram inside of it uh, for the bowden gauge okay so the, these are all mechanical terms you can read it by yourself so here the chamber unit saw it works once the pressure is going to be applied on downward side so on the uh, upper side due to this elliptical part the mechanical reading is going to be changed on this scale on this needle and uh, according to this scale you can read the reading depending upon the pressure that is generated within the chamber of the u um, tube or you can say for the vessels in which the uh, liquid has been kept the last thing that we are going to be study today is the pressure trans transducers a transducer is a device which transfer energy in any form from one system to another so your bowden gauge is an example of that 
A Borden gauge, for example, is a mechanical transducer. Is in that it has an elastic element, that elliptical element that converts the energy from the pressure system that is at the bottom of the Borden gauge in which the fluid has been kept and pressure has been generated against the atmospheric pressure and above that elliptical part, mechanical part has been moved and this needle has been moved according to the scale to a displacement in a mechanical measuring system. An electrical pressure transducer, this Borden gauge is an example of mechanical but we may have the other kind of the pressure transducer in which the pressure of the fluid can be measured in many other terms like electrical pressure transducer that converts the displacement of a mechanical system further like a step ahead of the Borden gauge usually a metal diaphragm to an electrical signals either actively of it, if it generates its own electrical output or passively if it requires an electrical input which it modifies as a function of the mechanical displacements. So as, as an electrical signals in a digital form you can get the answers that this is the value of your pressure for that particular fluid that you are using to measure it. So that is also available in, in the markets and in the field when uh, you will go and you will see. So you can search it on the internet also, the electrical type of the pressure transducers. In one type of the pressure transducer, an electrical strain gauge is attached to a diaphragm that will show you the displacement of the needle in terms of the strains and that displacement will going to be again uh, related with the pressures values. As the pressure changes, the deflection of the diaphragm changes. This in turn changes the electrical output which through proper calibration can be related to the pressure. That's very important that you need to do the proper calibration also. Such a device when connected to a strip chart recorder can be used to give a continuous record of the pressure. In lieu of a strip chart recorder, the data may be recorded at fixed time intervals on a tape or a disk using a computer data acquisition system or it may be displayed in on a panel in a digital form. So all of the data of the pressure that can be related and then calibrated from this these kind of the devices, those are very much modern kind of the devices can be further uh, attached or can be connected with the data acquisition system, mean computers. So from there in a digital form, in a graphical form, in a tabular form, in any form you can get the answers or relations of the uh, strain gauges with the pressure and finally the pressure values you can determine. Okay. So